Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another X-Gen hair tutorial in Maya. And this time we are gonna be talking about curls. This has been highly requested. My previous X-Gen tutorial was very popular. So hopefully you guys will find this video tutorial helpful too. In this scenario, we are going to be learning how to create curly hair using X-Gen. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is my current character. She is modeled kind of sad, but I'm gonna go ahead and give her some curly hair. I am assuming you've already seen my X-Gen tutorial first. So if you are a little bit lost, make sure you watch the tutorial and I go ahead and leave it in the, the link on the description as well as on the video itself. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna duplicate this character because I need a scalp. So I'm gonna press one here so I can see the real geometry, which is very low. I'm going to go to faces and shift, double click, shift, double click, shift, double click here as well, delete, I deleted that back here too, that's fine, double click, whoops. <laughs> All right, let's see. So what I'm trying to do here is create a line or a scalp for my character so I can create X-Gen. So I'm just kind of going through and deleting this. And the reason why I'm doing it in this direction is because I can just double click now here and delete this with no problem. Same thing with the face, no problems there. And then the ears, a little bit more complicated because I have to go in here and just delete them. So let me just grab a chunk here. I gotta make sure I don't accidentally delete anything else that I may need for the hair delete. I'm going to pause the video so I can work on the rest. You don't need to watch me do this. Here's my scalp. Let's go ahead and change this back to translate zero. And there we go. We have a scalp. The next thing I need to do is go to generate, create interactive groom splines. And what this does is that it gives me a lot of hair and I get to play with this. Now, since the scalp is ready to go, I can just grab this, call this scalp geo, and I'm actually going to hide it. Control H. So now that I have this hair, I can now start working. So over here to the top right under workspace, there is an X-Gen interactive groom. And here we have the outliner and I'm gonna go into the X-Gen interactive groom editor and I'm gonna open all of these up. This is going to help me create more detailed descriptions. Now, if you're happy with the length, you could leave it like this, but I'm going to go into my scale and change this to 1.5 if you need to make it longer. I'm gonna go back to the description and right now the width is about 0 0.05 and I'm going to change this to 0 0.03 just to make my hair a little bit thinner. Now that it's a little bit thinner, it still looks like a bunch of rectangles. So let's grab the description again and we are going to crank up the taper to about one. It can be a little bit less if you want to. I'm also going to increase the start taper so it's not a perfect spike. This, is, this will have a little bit more thickness at the root and it thins out at the edges, which is great. And by the way, the character is still in work in progress. I need to replace her eyes, but as you can see, she's moving forward. Okay, and just for fun, I personally like to see the render, so I'm gonna go ahead and render. All right, so I interrupted the render and you can get the idea of what it looks like. So as you can see, um, her hair is kind of thin. Um, I definitely need more, but I'm gonna add more later. Right now, I'm just looking at the shape. So I'm gonna uh, create a snapshot here make this a little smaller just so I can go back to it because it's kind of fun seeing the progress. Okay, so next we're gonna go to an add modifier and we are going to use what's called clump. And as you can see, it creates this interesting looking spikes or clumps of hair. Now we have a clump effect here which we can decrease and increase. So, you know, you can always make it less clumpy or spiky like this. And you can also use this as a clump scale. So if you don't want the uh, the edges to be so broad, you can also bring in it if you want to. So now I've got this really cool cyberpunk look. So you can use the scale to kind of help you create that look. Of course, you can always click on this end, which will, you know, give you a little bit more control. So again, you are in control of a lot of these values. As we start going down, you can choose clump variance, which will change the clump. So again, you've got some interesting effects here. So just uh, have some fun with it. We're going to keep scrolling down until we'll get to curl which is the big one that we want. And we can activate the curl, but you'll notice that nothing is really happening. And the reason why is because we have to go a little bit further down to the curl scale. So the curl scale is a flat line. And if I take this P 
piece and I start to move it down, you'll notice that it starts to curl. So what I can do is actually increase this all the way to the top so the full hair gets complete curls. At the end, we get a nice curly hair. So now if I go back up to curl, I can increase my curls and you can see now my character now has intense curly hair. So let's see what that looks like with our render. So as you can see, she has very intense curls. So before she had nice little spikes, now she has some curls. All right, let's control this a little bit. If you want, if you're interested, you can also use this thing called offset, which will help kind of change the curl if you want to. You can also mess around with orient, which will give you a different type of curl. So if you're not happy with the way it's been shaped, you can always change the orient as well. And you can see that we have a lot of really fun curly hair, but what if we wanted more clumps? Take a look at clump points and then take a look at density. Um, when you change this value to two, you'll start to get even more hair. So this is the way you can produce some really nice curly hair. So again, this is in the clump description and I'm going to increase these to three. Now these numbers vary depending on the scale of your object. So my scale of the object is about the size of this grid. So yours may be a little bit different. So keep that in mind. So under clump variance, instead of going on one direction, which curls it in an interesting way, I'm actually going to frail her hair a little bit. So that kind of opens up that those edges. So if I want to, I can go and do an interesting effect, but around, around here should be good. Going to the clump map, you can increase the radius variance. So if you're interested in kind of playing around with the radius variance, you can. And if you want even more curls, go ahead and go into curl and type in the number value two, and then you're gonna get even more curls. So depending on how dense you want these curls to be, you're more than welcome to do so. So let's see what this looks like right now. All right, so let's compare it before and after. Having a lot more curls definitely adds to it. All right, what I'm gonna do next is uh, increase my clumps and I am going to add even more just because I feel like there's still not enough clumps. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to four. Again, you can kind of play around with your clump variance if you want to. So there's a lot of really fun things you can do with XGen. All right, so now that I have my curly hair, I'm gonna go to my description base and this is where I can increase my density multiplier. So right now it's at one and I'm gonna double it. So that means that she's gonna get significantly more hair. So don't worry if she looks a little bit bald, but we're gonna go and increase the density multiplier once we have our hair set up. So let's see what that looks like. All right, very nice, it's starting to come along. So this is what we started off with, get some curly hair, more curly hair, and now significant uh, more density. So excellent, okay. Next, how do we control this so we can get a hairstyle? I'm gonna turn my resolution gate off so I can work on this. And that is through freezing. So what I wanna do up here at the top under XGen tab, there is a freeze tool. And this is a tool, so make sure you open up the tool settings here. And then I'm gonna to go to symmetry and make sure that my symmetry is to object X. So whatever happens on the left happens on the right. Now I'm gonna reset my tool just to make sure that you guys, you and I have the exact same one. Again, I'm gonna go back here, click on object X. And what I'm gonna do is freeze the top portion of her hair. So this blue section means that it's basically frozen. And what's nice about freezing it is that if I manipulate one side, it would also work on the other. Then I'm going to grab the comb tool right here. And again, I'm gonna reset my tool so you and I have this, the same tool. And then I can just go in and start brushing her hair down. Now, this is a little harder with just this tiny little brush. So I'm gonna increase my size and you can do it here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of bring this down. Now, I forgot to turn on symmetry. So let's make sure that we turn on object X so I don't have to recreate everything. And just kind of bring that hair down. Some of the frozen ones, as you can see, are being affected by it, but that's okay. Um, as long as it looks good. All right, we're gonna bring that hair down. If you feel like you're starting to lose the volume, just bring it back out. All right, let's go back to freeze. I'm going to invert frozen. And then I am going to freeze another part, which is the front, and then keep working with it. So again, I'm gonna grab my comb and I'm gonna start bringing this down. Just start giving her some nice curly hair. If you want to do bigger strokes, you can. It kind of helps move the hair.
Now you'll notice that it's starting to go through the geometry. And I'm actually going to undo because I need to select collide with mesh. So what that means is that it won't penetrate the mesh. So I'm going to undo a little bit. I'm going to click on collide. So once I paint again, it won't do that again. Now my strength is at 50%. And again, if you start losing volume, you're more than welcome to kind of bring it back. Look at it in multiple angles, angles see how, what you think. All right, let's go th to unfreeze. I'm actually going to unfreeze all. And then I am going to freeze this portion here, which is the front or the back. And then I'm going to start working on the front. Bring some of that volume back. Again, I'm going to select freeze tool, unfreeze. And after that, it's just kind of tweaking. Oops. Let's grab the comb tool and I'm going to kind of make the, sm the size a little bit smaller. And I can just go in and kind of tweak some other things. If I feel like I've lost something I want to keep that silhouette. Make sure you keep that silhouette going. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, you can see that her curly hair is still there. It's just a little bit shaped. And let me go ahead and render it in the back. All right, it's coming together. Now I'm going to give her a little bit more hair. I'm going to go to my description settings. Again, make sure you go to your attributes. And I'm going to make her hair a little bit thinner by changing it to 0.2. I'm going to go to description base and increase her amount of hair that she has. So it's really nice and dense. And she does have a little bit of uh, flyaway hairs, which if you had curly hair, you know that that's the truth. And I'm going to add another uh, modifier. This time I'm going to add a little bit of noise. So as you can see, it creates a really fun texture and I can turn it off and turn it on. And you guys can see the effect. The noise is going to help it look a little bit more alive. So um, I can increase the frequency or decrease it, but it just kind of gives it a little bit more life. And then I can also increase the magnitude so she looks like she's been struck by lightning or I can kind of calm it down a little bit. So by adding this noise, it just gives a little bit more variation to the hair. So it's not so perfect. You can also control where it's going to happen. So for example, I'm going to make it really frizzy just so you guys can see. There is this magnitude scale and I can tell it to impact only the edges. For example, so I'm just trying to get the edges or you can tell it to affect the core and then the edges, uh, the roots are curly, but the tips are not. I actually want it the other way around. I actually want it to be a little bit more frizzy around the edges, not this dramatic, obviously. So I am going to decrease the magnitude, but I want it to have a little bit more impact on the tips and less around the scalp. So that's going to help with making this a little bit more variation. So let's see what that looks like. So this is what the back of the hair looks like. So this is before and this is after. And let me take a render of the front. And there we go. Curly hair, much more dense, a little bit more noisy. So this is what we had before. It is what it is now. It's a little bit more realistic. It's really up to you what type of curls you want for your character. But I feel like this is way more realistic. So again, this is what we started with. We started giving her some clumps and curls, more, cl more clumps, more curls. And then we started to actually give her some a hairstyle. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. And please, if you guys are creating 
X-Gen characters using my tutorials, I would love for you to tag me in your social media. You can find me in Facebook, you can find me in Twitter, and also in Instagram. So I would love to see your work if these uh, tutorials are helping and it makes your character's hair come to life. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I know that there's a lot of video tutorials out there and I really appreciate you taking the time watching it with me. So if you have time, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com and sign up for my newsletter. Um, that's where I share some what's going on with Academic Phoenix with me and other projects. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com and you can also download free eBooks, free tutorials, free 3D models and so much more dedicated for just you. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click on that little bell so you don't miss anything else. I really appreciate your time. Keep creating and I will see you next time.